In this video, I will show you how to book into Google Calendar using an AI phone call. If you are not familiar with AI phone callers, these are realistic sounding, quick to respond AI systems that can directly replace the need for manual phone calls. This video will cover specifically how to build a particular automation to book appointments into Google Calendar. So if you do wanna learn more about building AI phone calls from scratch, you can go ahead and watch my two hour tutorial in the top right. You can simply ask the assistant when you would like to book in for, if the time is available, you'll be directly booked in. And if the time is not available, it will recommend three alternative close times, which you can then choose from. This automation does not require any third-party calendar services like Cal.com. We're going to directly book into Google Calendar. Here is a quick demo of the system. Hello, this is Mary from Mary's Dental. How can I assist you today? Hey, I'd like to book in an appointment for tomorrow at 11 a.m. This'll just take a sec. Great news. Your appointment for tomorrow at 11 a.m. is booked. See you then. Thank you. To do this, I'm gonna be using vapi.ai for the AI phone caller and make.com for the booking automation. And at the end of this video, I'll give you access to this template for completely free. My name is Brendan and I run Inflate AI where my team and I help businesses integrate the latest AI solutions. So this is the automation that I've built to book appointments into Google Calendar and you can connect this system directly to any AI phone caller system but in this case, I've gone ahead and connected this to a VAPI assistant as a function. And whenever a booking is needed, you can just run that function. It runs this make automation and either checks if the appointment slot is been booked. If it hasn't, it'll book it in. And if it has been booked before, it'll recommend three other times that are close to that time. So once again, if you aren't familiar with VAPI or make, you can go ahead and watch my two hour tutorial where I cover everything there is to know about make and about VAPI. So I'm going to do a walkthrough of exactly how this automation works step by step. So the first module that I've got in this make template is the webhook and the webhook is where we receive data from. So if I go back to VAPI, you should be familiar with this, but in the function section, I've got a booking function and this booking function is called booking. Uh, and there's the function description is that this function is used to book an appointment. Only run this function if the name has been captured and the appointment time is stated by the user only. So the reason we've done this is because we want to capture their name. We want to know who's booking the appointment and obviously when that appointment is being booked. And that is the only data that is required to make this make automation work. Once we've gone ahead and captured information into our webhook with the name and booking date, we're moving on to this next step with the chat GPT or open AI step. So the reason that we have this step is because not always will they tell us the date and time and year and all of that info. We do have to sort of figure that out ourselves. So in the case of the demo that I just showed you previously, I said that I'd like to book for tomorrow at 11 a.m. So the system has to figure out what day tomorrow even is, where does 11 a.m. fit into that, what time is it currently, um, and also what time zone are they in. And obviously the system uh, has its own time zone and how we can actually communicate that data to get the right date and time. So what I've gone ahead and done is created a system prompt here that says we have just asked the user when they would like to book a meeting. You'll be provided with the current date and their response. You must output the date and time they would like to book the meeting in date time format. Only output the date time in ISO 8601 format, no notes slash text, and only output in UTC time. So we're just adding in some conditioning here to set the time uh, to be in a format that is accepted by the Google Calendar and by all of the other make steps that I'm gonna show you in just a minute. Then below this, we have a user role that says this is the current date and time. So in my instance, this caller is being used and I'm calling from uh, Australia, so I want it to be in my time zone. So I've gone ahead and put my time zone here. So in the case of your system, you want to obviously put in your time zone uh, that the booking automation is going to be running in, as well as the people that are calling in from needs to be the, the right time zone. So if you're calling people in multiple different time zones, you may have to set this to be a variable and to change uh, when you're calling somebody from a different time zone to obviously book in different time zones. So if you're only doing one time zone, you can just obviously type it in there. Then below this, we've got this function call parameter, and this is obviously the booking time that the user has just stated from VAPI. So I'll show you how to get this. If we go back to the VAPI dashboard, go into our function, we can actually run a sort of uh, test payload from the VAPI platform. If I just look here, we can actually do a sample function payload. We'll see both of our properties here, name and booking time. And then all we need to do is just put in some fake values. So I can just type my name. We can type booking time as tomorrow. 9 a.m. and then ultimately once you've got uh, this data here you can hit test endpoint if i just go back here we can hit run once go here test endpoint and what you'll see is that data is about to populate and boom there we go 
you'll see that this is actually ran down the path of not available because I am booked out for tomorrow at 9 a.m. So that has perfectly worked there. But ultimately what you'll get is once you've done that, you'll get all of these fields populated from Vapi and then we can just click into the function call parameters and you'll see Brendan tomorrow 9 a.m. The info that I just sent through is now populated and you can use the booking time right here. And it just needs to know when the user would like to book so we can get the exact time format. Then we're moving on to a Google Calendar step. And this Google Calendar step is to understand whether or not the time that they're looking to book for is booked or not. And this is gonna make the decision between either going down the path of making a booking or obviously not making a booking. And so what I've gone is created this Google Calendar get free busy information. I just click into Google Calendar. That one is all the way at the bottom, get free busy information. So that's the one we wanna use. And then I've got it added a minimum time, which is result. So result is the time that has come directly from our booking time. So this is the exact same time we like to book for. And then what I've done is in the maximum time. So the minimum time is the start of the appointment and the maximum time is the end of the appointment. So depending on how long you want the appointment to be, that's how long you set this to be. So this is a minutes value. So in my case, my appointments get set at 15 minutes. If yours are 30, you need to increase that to 30 or if they're an hour, increase them to 60 minutes. So in this case, I've done an add minutes function on mate.com, we can actually change the time with quite a few different settings. So I've gone ahead and used the add minutes function and then that very simply adds minutes to the time. So it'll just put the maximum time as 15 minutes ahead of the booking time. And this will allow us to see if the calendar is booked within this time zone. Uh, if it is, then we go down two different paths. So now I have this router right here. You can go into tools and then use the router. The router is for going down two different paths based on a certain condition. In this case, the condition is whether or not the appointment is or the time slot is booked. If I click on this little uh, sort of line here, this is the sort of path that determines uh, if it's going to go down that path. On the available section here, click into this, you'll see available condition. And we've used this variable from Google Calendar. And this variable from Google Calendar is telling us whether or not it's booked or not. So this value right here is essentially a value that is only populated if the booking time is booked out. So this booking value right here comes directly from the Google Calendar uh, module right here. And so this value is only, it only exists if it's booked out. So if it doesn't exist, it is available time. So if I just look at the result, this right here is the, the data that we've gotten back from this module. And it's either gonna say that it is available uh, to continue or it's not. So what you'll see here is busy because I was busy in that time zone, this busy part of the request that we got back is full. So we can see here, we are busy between 9 a.m. and 9.15. So we're obviously not, we obviously can't go down that path. So that's why I've said, if this does not exist, then it will run down this path. But if it does exist, it means we are busy and we have to go down the other path. So now if I click into the not available line here, I've just used this set fallback. So essentially, if it doesn't run down this path, or well, we have to be running down this path. So just click yes, and it will automatically run down this path. But in the case that we were available within that time frame, all it would do is create a new event uh, in our calendar. You can connect to your Google Calendar account very easily within Make by just logging into your account. And then it's very easy to create the booking, just give it an event name. You can put in the function from the actual VAPI name of the person. You can put in the start date from the ChatGPT date they'd like to book. You can put in a duration here for how long you'd like it to go for add in a description um, and just add in a bunch of settings that are the same as the Google Calendar bookings are. And then from here, we're moving on to a webhook response. And this webhook response is just telling Vapi that the appointment has been booked. So if it goes down this path, this information here within the status, great, your appointment has been booked, is sent to Vapi to then tell us verbally that the appointment has been booked um, and then that we're good to go. Obviously, if that is not the case, we're gonna now run down this path, which is gonna hit this tools function. Now, the point of this tools function is to now format the date to the start of the day. So what's happened is that we've obviously found out that the time is not available. So what we wanna do is go to the start of the day and go all the way to the end of the day and find out which time in between is actually available and then suggest those options to the user. So we've gone ahead and used the format date function, a part of make.com. We've taken the result from the ChatGPT step and we're just saying format that in a year, month and date format, as well as in this sort of uh, format here. So as long as it's the same as this, what we're gonna get is the set the start date of that day. And we're gonna use this to find out which areas or time slots in the day are available to be booked in for. So then we're using the Google Calendar free busy module again. We're putting in that day from here, so the start of the day. And then what we're doing is using an add hours function. 
So we're actually adding hours to the day to say between this time and 24 hours later, so the entire day, uh, which are the time slots that are available. So if we run this function, it's gonna give us all of the times that are available. So we can go to the JSON function right here. And then what we need to do is actually just format this data so that the chat GPT step can use it. So using this JSON block here, click into this, and all we've done is use this object of the busy time slots from Google Calendar. So in this case, it's not actually looking for all of the times that are available. It's just looking at all of the times that have been booked. So it's looking at the entire day. It sees all of the times that are not available and we're using AI to detect which time slots are available to then suggest to the user. Then what happens is that it takes the UTC time zone because we're still in UTC time zone from when we first initially converted it at the start of the automation. And so all I'm doing is converting it back to my time zone. And the reason is because we want to obviously tell the user uh, the times they want to book in for at the right time. So we're just using one step here. It says convert it from UTC to AES, AEST, which is my time zone. So you would have to update that to your own time zone. Other than that, that'll work. Then we're just finding some alternative times. And so what we've done here is we're looking at all of the available times that we've just been given. And we just want it to essentially pick out the available times. And we're just using AI to do that. Using this sort of prompt here, uh, once again, you get access to this in the template. But this is just saying, please recommend three alternative 15 minute time slots. It's looking through all of the time slots um, through the data that we gave it. We're obviously going to be um, wanting to look for that in the Australian time zone. So making sure that we output it um, within the right time zone. And then we're also using some further conditioning right here. I say, this is the current time. You must ensure it's not earlier than this. Obviously we want to be booking into the future. So I've just put in the current date uh, that is with also the current time zone. And then the final step, we're generating a message that we want to send to the user. So we're using this because we actually want to obviously tell the user and explain to the user exactly what time zones or time slots are available for them. Um, and then we're just pretty much putting in the, re the previous ChatGPT step of all the alternative times, giving it an example that says, unfortunately, your chosen time slot was booked out. You can book in for this time, that time, this time. And so that way we can really get a nice, nicely formatted response to tell the user that these times are available. Um, and then they can obviously make that decision to whether or not to book in for that time. And then obviously we have our webhook response and this is just taking all of the information from this step, sending it to Vapi and then just telling the user. So I'll go ahead and do another test run. So I'm gonna try book in for 9 a.m. tomorrow, which I'm not available for. We'll go ahead and see what it says. So tomorrow 9 a.m. test endpoint, make sure that this is running. Uh, once you've hit the scheduling button, it'll run every time. But just for this testing purpose, you gotta hit the run button. It has now detected that, it's seen that the time is not available and then it's just gonna go ahead and use these ChatGPT steps to figure out whether or not um, we have some alternative times. Click into here and you can see, unfortunately your chosen time slot was booked out. We can, however, book you into one of these three close alternative times, 8 a.m., 9.15 or 11.15. So I just saw that these were the times that are available tomorrow, which is accurate. Um, and then they can choose that time. As, one, as soon as they say they like to book in for 9.15, this automation will just run again and then we can obviously have the, the right appointment booked so i'll just showcase that happening again hit run once go here and let's say they decided that 9 15 would work for them they can just hit test endpoint or they would just say it and then we'll see here boom the, the appointment has now been booked because 9 15 was available uh, and then there you go so it's booked in that appointment uh, and ready to go to get completely free access to this template go ahead and sign up for my resource hub which is linked in the description you'll get access to this make template and you can just clone it directly into your own account. And if you want to learn more about building AI phone callers, you can go ahead and watch my two hour tutorial covering everything there is to know, which is on the screen right now.